this story from my man Nightwing, and I just had to do a response video to it. Folks, the black church is just a microcosm of the failures that go on within our overall community. And what is absolutely funny to me is the fact that so many people who claim they are born-again, religified witnesses who gots to testify go about talking so much crap about everyone else who doesn't attend church service. My grandfather and my pops used to always have bad things to say about the black church when I was a kid. And the older I get, I agree with both of them more and more. These churches sprout up on every single corner like dandelions and weeds growing out of the crack of a sidewalk. And I'm telling you right now, what we need to do is just snatch them from the root and spray some damn weed be gone on every spot where they exist so another one doesn't show up in its place. I mean, this story right here says it all. You have to stick around to hear two women in Metro Atlanta are accusing a local man of having sex with them and not telling them he was HIV positive. One of those women says she now has HIV. And police in Clayton County and Atlanta have charged the man in both cases. R.J. Watson has been working this story and joins us with more. Hey, Jay. Hey there, DeMarco. His name is Craig Davis, and he's been charged with reckless conduct by a person infected with HIV. Davis was in jail in Fulton and Clayton counties for three weeks, and tonight he's out on $30,000 bond. The story was broken by a local blogger who knows one of the alleged victims and Davis. And that he is somewhat of a ladies' man is how he described it. He said William McCray says ladies. he told Craig Davis he was writing a blog about him, and in just three days it has blown up. The story is that early this summer, two women who didn't know each other went to police alleging Craig Davis slept with them, alleging he had HIV and didn't tell them. Police investigated Davis, and two months later, he was arrested in Fulton and Clayton counties, charged with reckless conduct by a person infected with HIV. They are really upset that he did not give them the opportunity to make the decision as to whether or not they would want to move forward and be sexually involved with him. One 46-year-old alleged victim in Atlanta told police she was abstinent for 15 years until she began dating Davis. At her yearly checkup, the doctor advised her she tested positive for HIV. The alleged victim in Clayton County told police that the man she'd been having sex with recently told her he has HIV. In the police report, the victim says Davis told her, with HIV, you can still live and it's not the end. The woman also told police Davis was a pastor at a big church, and when she asked him why he didn't tell her, he advised because the Lord had told him to be still. We made contact with one of the women in the case. She did not want to comment. So far, she has tested negative for HIV. Now, there was a Metro Atlanta church mentioned in the blog, and that one of the women worked there with Davis. Our calls to that church were not returned, but Craig Davis called us today to tell us he's not a member of that church and never has been. Davis said several times he did not want us to report he was a member there. Well, we asked him how he felt about the charges against him, and what he wanted to say about that, he referred us to his attorney. His attorney has not returned our calls. We'll stay on this. Jay Watson, 11 Alive News. Now, folks, you already know that only a handful of the women he was laying pipe to have come forward because the rest of them are going to do the same thing that he did, talking about the Lord told them to be still. So them sisters in the church who weren't messing around with him are going to start pressing each other for information, talking about, uh, Sister Josephine, I noticed that you done gotten mighty thin as of late. Uh, oh, don't worry about me, Miss Mac. It's just that new weight loss supplement I've been taking. Yeah, next thing you know, she gonna give it up to one of the ushers that's been trying to tear that thing up for years or push up on the newest male member of the church before one of the other sisters beats her to the punch and gives him a piece of her sunshine to see if she can persuade him into becoming a full-time member. And don't laugh to yourselves and say, yeah, but that don't go on in my congregation because it's happening in every last one of them. Look, look, she been in over. Claude Hammers, the Lord is my shepherd. He know what I want. Excuse me, brother. Miss Parker, Miss Parker. Another thing 
that really fires me up is the way that folks who go to church, and particularly black women, are so quick to blame any and everything on the devil. Oh, the devil is a liar. No, it's you lying beneath all that caked up foundation and makeup piled on top of your greasy face and sporting that piss blonde or red wig on your head. Then you got the nerve to complain, talking about, where are all the real men at? Why aren't they going to church anymore? And the reason why is because we see past that bullshit. Hello, Sean. I haven't seen you in church for a while. Well, ever since I got that new NFL package, I always seem to be busy on weekends. Number one, while you do all that cheering and clapping for Reverend Roundabout, while he's giving a three-hour sermon, we usually sit in the comfort of our own home, watching a ball game and relaxing after dealing with so much crap during the course of the work week. Number two, why on earth will we pay 10% of our total income to an institution that is not using at least half of that money to secure an education and a proper vocational strategy for our youth so we can make sure that they have skills that are required to live in today's world. So they don't have to keep on coming back to the church as adults when they are down and out talking about... Can you say... Say what, brother? Now, you know, we're under the blood of Jesus, so we can't shoot and stone people like we used to. All we have to do is repent and God will forgive us and, and take us where we need to be. But I tell you, man... If it wasn't for the blood, there'd be a whole lot of us being stoned and being in hell right now, but over the tide. But for the blood of Jesus, we'd be doomed. I mean, I thought about when we first built the dome, I wanted to put some of those little moving bars and uh, give everybody a little card. And they stick it in a little computer slot. And if they were tithing, beautiful music would go off. And, you know, welcome, welcome, welcome to the world dome. But if they were non tithers the bar would lock up. Access the night. The red and blue lights would start going. The siren would go off, and a voice would go throughout the entire dome: crook, 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 crook. <laughs> Security would go and apprehend them. And once we got them all together, we'd line them up in the front and pass out Uzis by the ushers. We'd point our, uh, our Uzis right at all those non tithing members because we want God to come to church. And at the count of three Jesuses, we'd shoot them all dead. And then we'd take them out the side door there, have a big hole, bury them, and go ahead and have church and have the anointing. Number three. The black church is a sorority asylum with no fraternal leadership because women are heading up most of the organizations. The few black men who do attend are either down and out on their ass and looking for some sister to con out of money or pussy, there's some old, tired lions who don't have an ounce of fight left in them, so they get dragged to church every Sunday by their wives, or they're a bunch of down-low cats and homosexuals using the church as a breeding ground to sort out new conquest. Number four. Where in the entire New Testament, or the old one for that matter, does the Creator ever commission a group of blabbermouths to be in charge of gathering sessions at His request? When you sisters show me that one, I might lay the remote down and put the Heineken back in the refrigerator. But until then, the only time I'm hooting and hollering on Sundays is when my team crosses that goal line. Because I don't need to hear no man that puts his pants on the same way that I do chastise me and tell every woman in my community that the only man that they will ever need in their miserable lives is Jesus. Any other ethnic group would round up men like this and put them in front of firing squads. But the black community is trained to turn the other cheek and give anyone that is holding a Bible and quoting scriptures a free pass. Pass the pay that bread stole from the church. That's all right. We forgive him. Reverend Ricochet got someone's wife pregnant. The devil must have gotten into him. Deacon Download molested children. Don't worry. He's preaching the word good. Fellas, and I do mean fellas, 
it's going to come a time when we're going to have to take battering rams to these institutions' doors and do away with this Frankenstein once and for all. Because until we do, they're going to keep taking advantage of our women's gullibility and things are going to continue to get worse. Anyway, that's my rant for the day. I'm out. <laughs>